First of all, I don't know if you guys heard, but Christine's book hit the New York Times bestseller list a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah! And tonight is the last stop on your U.S. tour, yeah, right? Okay, so how are you feeling right now? Like, how was tour? Like, paint us a picture of your experiences, tour. favorite tour stop, <laughs> anything you learned on tour. Okay. Well, tour has been amazing. Every stop, everyone has been so kind and so wonderful. Even when I had to moderate myself and I was asking myself questions in a different voice, I'm standing on the other side and being like, okay, let me answer. Um, fun times. When you hit the bestseller list a couple days ago, what <laughs> amazing. I'm not surprised at all. Like, were any of you guys surprised? No, I wasn't. I was like, holy shit, that's amazing, incredible, and so deserved. Um, but what... What was it like when you got the phone call? Who called you and then who did you call right after you got that life-altering news? Okay, so when I got this news, I was in the car on the way to the New Jersey stop and we were like in traffic going out of the Lincoln Tunnel and Jessica, the, my publicist, was just like, did you know the New York Times bestseller list comes out today? And I was like, oh, I thought, yeah, but I thought since I hadn't heard that I wasn't on it at all and they were just trying to be nice and not saying anything about it. Um, and then she just turned around and she was like, so you're number three. And I just was like, wait, what? <laughs> and she was like, you're number three on the New York Times bestseller list. And I just like sat there and stared into space and started crying. And then she got all of Wednesday books on the phone and they were like, ah, how are you feeling? And I was like, I can't really talk. <laughs> I don't know. And like, so I did nothing for the next hour except stare weirdly onto space. I spent like half an hour trying to tweet the picture. I spent like 15 minutes trying to circle it nicely on Instagram using their tools. I couldn't do it. And then I couldn't get it to tweet in order from zoomed out to zoomed in, so I deleted the tweet three times. Kat texted me. She's like, are you okay? I keep trying to retweet you and it keeps disappearing. What was it like when you got to tell your parents? Um, it was just like I was still in shock. So my mom came and I was like, oh yeah, I hit the list. And she was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, I texted my boyfriend, I'm number three. And he was like, oh really? What number am I? <laughs> and then like I couldn't answer. He just kept saying like 284, 13. <laughs> It was really, really crazy. I still can't believe it. And uh, thank you guys so much for supporting my book and being the best ever. I love you. <laughs> so you mentioned your publishing team at Wednesday Books. So I think most of you guys probably know Christine from YouTube and from being like one of the coolest, loveliest people ever. Um, but I mean, I don't think I knew when we first met. We've had like a bunch of events together over the years. Um, and I don't think I really knew when like we were first doing events together that you were a writer and so uh, that was in also not just a writer but an awesome writer like guys I was up until 1 30 last night reading this book and then I was up again at 7 in the morning like continuing to read it not just because we had this event today but because I literally just kept getting to these points in the book and being like I literally can't put this book down. Like, I need to know what happens next. And there, I won't spoil what happens in this book because it was such a joy to read so many of those surprises and to just keep feeling like, oh shit, like she just did that. Like, I did not see that coming in any way, shape, or form. Um, but can you give us like a little bit of like the history of how, you know, like how long you've been a writer, like, you know, how you started on BookTube and now you're here, like a New York Times bestselling author. Like, how did this book begin um have you had this idea for a while yeah um so first of all it's like so weird to hear like one of your favorite authors saying this stuff about your book i'm just like oh my god oh my god <laughs> i'm just like fangirling next to sarah right now i <laughs> <Like>, stop <laughs> how, this book how the book came to be okay so my college experience was like the beginning where she is in the beginning where she feels very alone and like she has no friends and she's in, had no romantic encounters and she feels very, very alone and isolated. Like that was me in my junior year. And I like did not know what to do about it. I went into college thinking, you know, as everyone has told me, everyone tells you college is amazing. It's gonna be the best four years of your life. You're gonna have life changing friends. 
It's gonna be everything. And then I got there and I sat in my dorm and I'm like, I'm ready. Where is it? You know? And like, it didn't come because the thing they don't tell you is that like your college experience is not gonna come to you. You have to chase it. You know, you have to work for it a little bit. You can't just sit in your dorm like watching Lost and be like, okay, is college coming? I wish someone had told me, you know, I don't know if I would have listened. It sounds really uncool to like join clubs and go to that club thing that they have as freshmen, but like you have to do it. Cause that's how you find humans that like, like things that you like that are gonna be friends with you. Cause I was in a quad. So I was like, oh, well I have these three built-in friends. I'm good. You know, but the thing is, those friends, like, while they were so nice, we didn't have so much in common. So, like, after we weren't living together, it wasn't like we were going to, you know, hang out all the time and talk all the time. It wasn't the same. You have to, like, find your people. And to do that, you have to look for them. I know it sucks. It's so hard. <laughs> but, like, you can do it. So, like, I was really scared and didn't want to study abroad. And it turned out to be the best decision ever. How many of you guys have read the book? already okay a lot of you okay so you'll know what i'm talking about where she has all these she has a notebook her horcruxes um <laughs> that she writes down everything in and i love the way that you kind of alternated between the traditional method of telling the story and then also moving the plot along through these journal entries did you keep a journal yourself while you were there that you drew from for this book no i didn't i just love writing through journal entries and i think just during these last two weeks i realized i think like subconsciously i've been very influenced by the books i read like in third grade i don't know if anyone read amelia's notebooks the american girl but like <laughs> i was obsessed with those and like it totally has changed the whole way that like i want to write and the amazing days of abby hayes i don't know if anyone read those like three people uh i was obsessed with those okay. i've got a bunch of questions for you because after just finishing this book i am brimming with questions okay first of all i have to know so shane's love interest in this book is called pilot yeah. where you've given me so much shit about like some of my character names so i need to ask you where did pilot come from it's hot i i was like yes i'm here for this name but also where did it come from um, okay, so Pilot's name was, it came from a, so I love YA, and you know, all the good YA books have their group of weirdly named characters. <laughs> I needed my weirdly named characters too. Yeah, so, like, we have Shane, who is, like, it's a, it's kind of normal, but it's a girl, and you usually expect Shane to be a guy, and then Babe is, um another one never mind we talk about her name in the book so i won't spoil um and then um sarah was actually sarah pronounced sarah just to be annoying <laughs> i needed a name that people could mispronounce <laughs> and then um pilot pilot's last name is pen and like there's this whole thing you know pilot pens have you ever used those <laughs> and like shane likes to write <laughs> with pens <laughs> <laughs> well, Shane also has a laptop named Sawyer. Yeah. So does uh. your laptop have a name? <laughs> oh, tell us, Yeah, my laptops have names. I just think because they're so loved. And like, since she like loves writing, she had to name her laptop too. Do you not name your laptops? No. <laughs> Maybe you should start. <laughs> you could call the first one Rice And. <laughs> in honor of the mispronunciation. <laughs> What's your current laptop called? My current laptop's name is, oh, it's Dolores. After, <laughs> no, after Dolores Abernathy from Westworld. Yeah. Have you watched that yet? No, you have to, I know you're really, really busy, but like, it's the best, it's a perfect TV show, the first season only. So at one point, Shane and Pilot Pen have a whole conversation about what three points in history they would go back to if they could. And I won't spoil things with what, what they say, but what are the three moments in history that if you could, you would go back to visit? But in the, in the book they say like, you know, except for killing Hitler, like that's a given, that's off the table. Yeah, anyone would do that first, but what would be your three moments in history? Oh my God, this is so hard and no one's asked me it yet, so I'm not prepared with an answer. Yeah, the end of the door. <laughs> I'm, I might choose stupid ones just because I can't think of good good ones so just forgive me so I just thought of one um, maybe when Taylor Swift was 
um, in high school, and then I would go find her in high school, and then we would be friends, and it would be beautiful. And um, another one. I'd like to, like, can I leave immediately? Yeah. So, like, I would go see a dinosaur. <laughs> Just to like see what they're like IRL because <laughs> I love them. Okay, and then for the third one, maybe um go meet Jesus and see how he is IRL. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I get to go to the year zero. It'd be great. <laughs> Those were um compelling compelling <laughs> answers. All right, so you mentioned Taylor Swift. Um, yeah. This book has a awesome soundtrack music. Seems like it is like literally woven into the pages. Like the chapter, like names are like different, like snippets from songs. It drove me crazy figuring out each <laughs> name, like each chapter name. It's like just like it's not even like an iconic lyric necessarily, and it just would drive me I'd, like nuts if I couldn't figure like, it out. Nice. Yeah. Um, but if you had to pick one song that was like the song of your life that embodied everything in your life, what would that song be? Oh no pressure. My God. <laughs> <laughs> one song ever? That's like one song that like, like sums up you. I feel like the songs that like I come to mind don't sum up me. They're just like my favorite song. Right, right, you can pick your favorite, pick your favorite song. Well, or top three. If you can't pick top one. three. Well, I really like Some Nights by Fun and wow. For some reason, that song always makes me really happy, and like, some nights, <laughs> um, I used to walk back from class to it like every day my senior year of college, just on repeat. That's a really good like driving with the windows down yeah. song. Like I like I have certain songs where like if they come on, like I just want to roll down the windows yeah. and like stick my hand out and like let it go in the breeze. <laughs> Not that I do that. So, um, I'm a mom now, you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm a Moms don't do that anymore when they're driving. What's the one thing you can't travel without? Like, what is, like, if you, like, had to just pick one thing that you had to throw into your suitcase, what would it be? What would yours be? Um, I don't How know. do you answer this I mean, question? like, I've got these, like, eye gel, like, patches that, like, <laughs> have wound up being really helpful now that I'm, like, an adult. And I also need socks. For the airplane, oh, yeah. like like and I'm like you know those airplane socks are like sad. Like I need like <laughs> thick wool socks. Oh, you can't use the airplane yeah, socks. I know. They offer yeah, them. the little thing. Ew. No. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I got this, like ew, why are you trying to give me socks? <laughs> I have my own. Um, so on that same note though, like I cannot travel without socks that like go to my calves because my legs get really cold on planes. Wait, are these like compression socks? No, just like regular socks. <laughs> like high waisted socks. I mean, <laughs> you understand? Knee like, high socks. <laughs> yeah, I have socks that go up here. <laughs> so Shane's a big Harry Potter fan. And you and I have had many conversations about Harry Potter. Yeah. I will never forgive you for sorting me in front of everyone at, like, what was it, my Air of Fire event in L.A.? It was Akamath. It was Akamath? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a very traumatic experience that wound up forcing me to reassess everything I was as a person because I believed I was a lifelong Gryffindor. Turns out... I'm a Hufflepuff, um, but you like managed to get my reaction on on camera as I was like, "What the f? I'm not a Hufflepuff. What? This can't be happening." I had like a meltdown, and not like a graceful one, like an ugly meltdown. But then I really thought about it. Like you can like helped yeah. convince me that like, yeah. no, like everything in my life has actually added up to me being a Hufflepuff. No. Okay, so I want to know. Like, okay, so Shane's favorite Harry yeah. Potter book is Prisoner of Azkaban. Yes. I want to know what your favorite Harry Such Potter book is. <laughs> is that a spoiler? It's fine. It's, it's mild. No, it's, that's not a spoiler. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I could spoil so many bigger things for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. But so, that what I want to know favorite Harry Potter book. Yes. I want to know what your Hogwarts house is mm -hmm. and what is your Patronus. Okay. Well, I feel like a lot of people know this because I talk about it incessantly. <laughs> I, um, my favorite Harry Potter is Seven, because it's the best. And then my <laughs> favorite... <laughs>
I'm a Ravenclaw. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, I'm Patronus. My Patronus is an osprey, which is a bird of prey, which I think really fits with the Ravenclaw thing. And also, I have this picture of me jumping like this, and it looks just like an osprey. So when I got it, I was like, oh yes, we're one and the same. <laughs> and Shane is a Hufflepuff. Yeah, yeah. Babe is a Gryffindor. And then we have Atticus, who, feel free to debate me because I've been debated at every stop. I have him as a Gryffindor. Not a Ravenclaw? Um, well, you think Ravenclaw? I don't know. <laughs> no, I've gotten Slytherin debate and Hufflepuff. No, I know, Slytherin? that's what I said. Someone said because he likes theater, he has to be a Slytherin. <laughs> what does that mean? A Ravenclaw, interesting. Like, I don't know. I, I, like, I, I feel like it's very intuitive. Yeah. But I I could see their Hufflepuff argument because that was like he's really nice and but I still think I mean I would like him to be Ravenclaw, that's nice. But I just thought he was a Gryffindor because I feel like he's not afraid to like confront anyone about anything. Yeah. And then Pilot. So I guess I was in denial about this because I could not sort Pilot while I was writing at all. Like every time I was done, I was like, I don't know, is a Ravenclaw or a Slytherin? Or like, I don't know, he doesn't fit into anything. And I finally realized this week that he's a Slytherin. <laughs> and yeah, woo! He's a cool Slytherin like you guys are who are whooping. <laughs> so you're trapped on a desert island. <laughs> what is the one movie, book, and TV show that you would want with you, and what person would you want with you? Could be fictional or real life. Oh. Okay, so start with book. What's the one book you like would want with you on a desert, just for like enjoyment reading over and over again? I mean, I guess I have to pick Harry Potter book seven, yeah. or the Throne of Glass series. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I really like that movie. Friend or a fictional character? I'll pick a fictional character. Percy Jackson. Yeah. He could catch us lots of fish to eat. <laughs> this is gonna be a hard one for okay. you. Okay. Edward or Jacob? <laughs> Gosh, it's obviously Edward. There's no Team Jacob. It doesn't exist. <laughs> yes, it does. And I. Carrying number. <laughs> How long have you been Team Jacob? Since Taylor or before? Um, I feel like I I read the series right when the first movie trailer came out for Twilight, okay. and so like he hadn't really like he was still like little a, baby. a little baby pup. <laughs> at that point. So it was kind of like before. I just okay. I kind of like the guy that like pieces you back together when like everything falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, All right. I guess I can see that from your books. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we need to get off of this subject. It's gonna come to violence. Okay. Television or movies? Um. Oh. I guess TV. I love both, but TV. Taylor Swift or the Beatles? It's in. It's relevant to the books. I'm not just like throwing out. Yeah. It's, I mean, I gotta pick my baby T Swift. <laughs> I was actually listening to the Beatles Sirius XM channel like nice. like this afternoon. It's cause like it's like in the book so much that I just I couldn't. I was like I need to hear some of these songs. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite Beatles song? Um, I really like Oh Bloody Oh Bloody. <laughs> nice. It's a little obscure, but not really. No, it's not. That's I like feel like some people haven't heard that one when I say it. No, everyone knows that song. And if they don't, they can leave. It. Yeah, you guys know that song. Do you guys have questions for Christine? All right, I'm just going to open up the floor. Do you want to pick or do you want me to? You pick okay. one Okay, I know. I, I, whenever, I can never pick people. But now I'm like, oh, I'm in charge here. Like, I get to pick. Your favorite toothpaste and vegetables. <laughs> okay, the question was, for those of you who didn't hear it, her favorite toothpaste and vegetable, like together as like a combination. <laughs> okay, if you're not familiar, I ask this question to a lot of authors. <laughs> um, so Crest 3D Whitening was my favorite toothpaste, 
And my favorite vegetable is, it, it's zucchini right now. It's really good and it's really easy to make. <laughs> I like if I could go through life without eating any kind of vegetable, I would. <laughs> it's so apathetic. It's no, it's gross. It's. Um, which one of Sarah's characters do you think she would be besties with? Uh, Dorian. <laughs> Someone asked me who I would ship her with from another fictional universe yesterday, and I was like, obviously Dorian. <laughs> I'm never mind. No spoilers. <laughs> Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> so Sarah had mentioned how she tried figuring out the chapter titles. Can you explain some to us and how you came up with them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like some of them would just like come to me as I'm... So the first two drafts had no chapters. It was just a mess <laughs> of crap. <laughs> yeah. So um, I had to go through and make the chapters, and I really loved doing it, but while I was doing it, I was also editing the draft, so I would have music on that I felt went with whatever I was writing. And a lot of times, either I would feel really connected to the song and pick a lyric from there, or I would be like, oh my god, this is Annie's, I think I'm gonna like it here. <laughs> like, well, yeah, like, yeah. And then yeah. the sound of music, I have confidence. Yeah, I have confidence. I was like, wait, was she listening to No, this? so that just was like in my head. I was like, this is the lyric for that. That's one of my pump up songs. <laughs> yes. I love that song <laughs> too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have confidence in me is a chapter title. There's a chapter called Close, and I was listening to Nick Jonas's Close over and over again, that whole chapter. <laughs> There's only one chapter that's not actually a song lyric, and I insisted on it still being the chapter title because it rhymed with the previous one, and I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> it's called Fail. <laughs> the one before it's called Sail. <laughs> Sail! <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, that song. <laughs> you with your head just poking up over the bookcase. <laughs> uh, so, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so, do you have any uh, ideas for future books? And if so, do you think you could tell us a little bit about them? I'm yes. so glad you asked that because that was one of the questions I didn't get to, which is, do you have ideas for future books? What are you working on next? Yes. Um, so, I have been working really hard on an outline, because I have really regret not doing that the first time, but my brain hates it. I am not a plotter, I'm a pantser, and, but if you want to be an author person, you have to be able to outline. So, I've been trying really, really hard, and I have a second draft of one, and I'm working on a third draft. It's like every time it gets a little more detailed, but my brain hates it. So, the next one I'm writing is a little darker, I mean not too dark because how dark can I really go, um, but it's definitely a little darker. The theme in this one here is like, you know, it's a lighthearted coming of age rom-com. The, the central themes of this one I'm working on right now are more like family drama based, but and it's told from two points of view because I was like, this is level one writing and now I can level up like two POVs. Um, and that's going to be exciting and um so it's there actually i won't say <laughs> but yeah a little darker two points of views but it'll still have romance because i love me a romance i can't write a book without a romance but now i get to do two things which is really cool because there's two Back you know my pilot and shane yes. made a question yes. which would be if they were trapped on a desert island what would be the three things they would pack with them Okay. They're gonna be there for a long time. They'll be okay. shaped though, so you don't have to say sunscreen. Okay. And food? Sure. And hunting tools? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna keep it light. <laughs> um, Pilot would bring his guitar and his overall hipster nature. And um, a box of plaid shirts. 